This is the Warlark. This was sent to me by Underground Hobby, Underground FPV. And uh, Underground FPV is a group that I recently started talking to and working with. They are surprisingly dedicated to improving the sport. I really, really appreciate that. And they have some of the best project management ability, I guess I would call it, than any other group of people that I've talked to in the industry. So I I'm, I'm really, really appreciate what they're doing and, and their, their drive and their direction for this stuff. This, this particular quad is a very, very special quad. I first flew this thing in um, San Francisco when I was, when I was at the, the California Speed Challenge race, and I broke that one that I was flying, unfortunately. But this is a very, very interesting one. And right now, there's two groups, Underground FPV and I think Newbie Drone, which are trying to improve it. It's $160 or something. It's a brushless setup, and there's a lot of features about this that I love. And when I first took a close look at it, I was really impressed with because the person that put this thing together and designed it really like thought about how it goes together. So it's using the little tiny uh, Racer Star 1103 motors. I think they're like 5,000, 10,000 kV, whatever, high kV uh, little Racer Star motors. I don't like these motors because they're really weak. They're like made of like aluminum can aluminum. They bend super duper easily, but what they've done is they put in a big protective cage. And when you look at the prop, they've done something really ingenious with the prop. I don't know why we haven't figured this out sooner. I'm sure there's other products that do it too. When you flip it over, it not only hooks onto the prop to the motor shaft, it actually hooks onto the whole motor bell to get more friction. Because the main issue with props this small is that the motor has too much torque and it just spins the prop off. That's an amazing thing. I, I can't even believe that I didn't think of that or anybody else's. I can't believe this isn't the standard. I mean, for little tiny brushless motors, there's no need for us to have like these two nuts on top. You can just have a press fit over the motor bell, and that would be awesome. Aside from that, there's other very, very ingenious features in this thing. The frame itself, the person that made this really, really thought through what they were doing. The frame itself can be bought. It's very easy to replace. This is this is one of the most, dur I think it's the more durable one of all the ones that I've flown. I, I have more. These are just the ones I have I'm making this video for. And uh, I've run it into a bunch of stuff, and I broke actually a prop guard, which is put a piece of scotch tape over, and it's holding fine. So let's take it apart and look at the inside, which is it just gets even more interesting. You take these three screws off, which I'd already taken off, and the whole thing pops off. <clears throat> and now take a look at this. What you're looking at here is the main board here, which is a four-in-one ESC. It's on rubber grommets already to take care of vibe or help with vibrations, which is huge, huge plus. None of the other ones have that. And well, let's look at the main board. It's a four-in-one ESC. I didn't I didn't take off the bottom plate, but if I did, you would see that the motors are on little JST connectors. They look like balance connectors, and they just plug right in to the main board, right into the main board. That's amazing. So if you do break a motor, you just unscrew six screws and you unplug it and plug in the new motor. It's that's incredible. It's an incredible way to replace a motor. No soldering, no worries. And then another thing you probably already noticed is that there's a balance port back here. That's how you power the thing. The battery it comes with doesn't even have a charge port. It comes with a little adapter to charge with, but that's an incredible thing because things this small don't draw so much current that you need a giant port for. Save all that weight, make, make the battery simpler, cheaper to produce, and just plug it in with a balance port. That's an incredible, incredible solution. I, I don't know why more of these little tiny things don't do that. It's got a full-size USB port, which is very nice. And then you'll notice that the flight controller, which also has, which is the second board in here, which also has the receiver built into it, plugs right into the 4-in-1, which I know is not an original thing, but it's very, very good. It's very nice, very clean, very easy. <laughs> That's the key, very easy. And then on top of that, you'll see the VTX, which plugs right onto that. And the camera, again, plugs into a port. So all the whole thing goes together with plugs. There's no soldering required. You can rebuild this whole thing with a screwdriver and that's it. You just take the whole thing apart and put it back together. There's no soldering required. And that is what's so magical about this thing. Now that this whole board and this thing exists, it's very easy to take what's already pre-existing and put it into something else that has better performance or different performance or what you want. <clears throat> so I hugely appreciate the designer having put this whole thing together. That being said, it still has the issue of all the other little crappy ones that it does not have even power delivery. It's, it runs on 2S, so it's great for indoors. That's that for that. Okay, that's that for this one. Um, please watch the discussion video re re regarding all of them. It's going to be much more informative.